For many decades, uh, we weren't given the opportunity to give voice to who we were and how we saw the world, uh, how we even understood treaties based on the oral history. And because of the industrial and residential school eras where the oral history transmission process was disrupted because the language wasn't allowed, a lot of what was passed on from grandfather to father, from grandfather to grandson, you know, stopped. So in the 1960s, the elders got together and said, look, we have to do something. There seems to be a disinterest, um, a, a state of apathy amongst our youth. They're no longer coming to ask us questions like we used to in our youth. So we have to find a way so that some of what we have learned were culturally appropriate can be used in the future. So that's where the recording sessions came and we started recording the stories. And it's basically uh, telling our story through our language and uh, making sure that, you know, there's any discrepancies or misunderstandings that we correct them. And a lot of our, our young people now are beginning to realize the power of language and uh, the, you know, our way of knowing comes with, uh, I guess, a, a feeling of... Uh, A feeling that has been denied our people for a long time, a feeling of confidence in saying, yeah, I know what happened, I know who I am. And yes, there was a journey and a search and trying to find out who that person was. But now I've found it and I'm going to continue looking so that at some point in time in the future, my children and grandchildren come to me and ask me, I'll have the answers.